Setting up a website can be overwhelming as it is, and especially if you're brand new to this whole business of creating an online brand, especially via a website. You add to that, that there is everyone and their mother offering some type of website hosting service. Now you might be saying, oh, well, I don't know what web, uh, website hosting is, Dale. I'll definitely be covering that today, right out the rip, right out the gate. But we're gonna take a deeper dive into what you need to know in the best website hosting for beginners. Make sure you stay tuned. What's shaking is Dale here, and I'm just tickled to death. You took a little bit of time out your day to spend a little bit of time with me to talk about my favorite thing in self-publishing books. Today's broadcast is sponsored by the fine folks over at Author Brand Kits. It is the one-stop shop to build out your author platform. They handle your website. They handle your custom email. They handle your custom domain name. They get your email marketing set up, social media, and so much more. Find out why I use Author Brand Kits myself when you visit over at dalelinks.com slash ABK. Again, that's dalelinks.com slash ABK. Go take a look at it. I think that you will find it'll be the perfect service for you to get things rocking and rolling as an author. All right. I said, we discuss what is website hosting. And I know some of you are probably like, come on, Dale, everybody knows what website hosting is. Believe it or not, not too many people realize what website hosting is. Yes, everybody knows what a website is, but believe it or not, you actually have to park that website on somebody's computer, on their server, if you will. And one of the ways to do that is through service providers that give a space for you to set up shop to do your website. So that's what website hosting is. Hopefully that made it simple enough. So they hold on to your website and make sure it's taken care of. The problem is there are a lot of website hosts. Heck, as I was putting together the thumbnail for the YouTube version of this podcast, I went and found a bunch of different logos from different providers. And I just, after a while, I was like, I had to stop because there was so many website providers. So who do you choose? So many to choose from. And you have a lot of people say, well, you should go use this or you should go use that or you should try out this or you should try out that. The bottom line is gonna be this. You're gonna really want to consider two, two major things. And I know right away, a lot of people are instantly gonna go, what's it gonna cost? Because obviously a lot of indie authors don't make a substantial amount of money. A vast majority of us don't make a substantial amount of money. So to ask us to part ways with say $60 for website hosting over the next year might be a tall ask, but that's gonna be the thing that you're gonna be looking into. Before you start looking into budget though, sure, you should take a look at the price tag. You should do comparisons, but you also need to consider your needs. What do you need in a website? Is it gonna be image heavy or is it just gonna be text-based? You gonna have videos gonna be hosted on it? Or are you gonna put a course on it? Is there gonna be some moving elements? Are you gonna be one of those people that puts in a 1990s-esque website with music on it? Don't do that, by the way. Don't, don't put music on your website. It just takes too much loading time. And I'm gonna talk about loading time and why it's gonna end up killing your website. So we're thinking about budgets and needs. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and do a comparison of all the different websites because there is a ton of them, but what I will tell you is a way to find your best website hosting, okay? One way to kind of just measure it out. Let me tell you a little bit of a horror story about my experience of working with website hosting. It was not a good story, and I shared it somewhat, but now I'm gonna go ahead and pull back the curtain. I'm gonna tell you everything about it. It's a story of HostGator. Yeah, before you start to go Google them up and such like that, I'm just gonna tell you it's not gonna be pleasant. I'm not gonna be sharing anything that's going to be heartwarming, easy for me to say, right? I picked up hosting to HostGator back in about July of 2015. I was working with my coach at the time, Jason Brock, and he's like, HostGator, you gotta get this. It's, it's dirt cheap and it gives you everything you want. And I was like, well, of course I'm gonna go ahead and get HostGator, why wouldn't I? And so I ended up getting HostGator and I was really happy because I ended up getting their, oh gosh, I think it called the baby plan, which means you can, un, you can host unlimited websites through this one service. So I'm like, that's cool. I can do other websites if I want to. And I did numerous websites. I would say six of them underneath that specific plan. It was great in the beginning. It was awesome. My websites were 
breakneck fast. They would load up quick. I had zero issues. But every year after, the site load times got worse and worse. And then I started getting comments from people on my YouTube channel about HostGator. They're like, dude, you need to probably look into these guys. They don't have a good record. And I'm like, really? They're like, yeah, apparently some stuff was happening behind the scenes. And some large parent company called EIG ended up picking up HostGator's services. They bought the service. And then it just went to hell in a handbasket really, really fast. So my site time started going slower. And the problem is with your site loading slow is we're in the day and age of instant gratification. And if you can't instantly gratify someone as they're trying to just browse your website, they're going to, they're going to tune out quite a few different search engine algorithms, including Google suppress specific websites that have a horrendous site load time. Because if it can't just be a simple thing of typing in the website and it popping up on someone's mobile device or on their desktop, you're now starting to work, all the odds are working against you. So we said, okay, well, can't be HostGator. There shouldn't be anything wrong with it. We compressed images, we condensed posts, we removed plugins, which by the way, if you ever start to do a website and you're using WordPress, WordPress has a ton of plugins that makes your website just a little bit more accessible, a little less friction for you as a creator. But the more plugins that you have, it's kind of like having a ton of images. It's going to slow the site down. So we removed some of the plugins. Even after all of that, condensing all the images, getting it to where everything was on the up and up, the load time was still five seconds as a minimum. Meaning that when someone visited my website, it would take five seconds for the entire thing to load. Now, a lot of people are kind of like, Dale, you're insane. You remember back in the 90s when it used to take, you know, 20 to 30 seconds to load a site? Yeah, I do. Those days are gone. There are so many other services out there. You don't have to wait that long. Keeping in mind that we had to sacrifice some of the quality that we like inside our website in order to actually get it to where we had a better site load time. Then I got hacked. This was early 2020. And one of the websites, for whatever reason, got hacked. And HostGator was great. They got a hold of me and they said, hey, we just kind of want to let you know that um, your one website was blacklisted due to like uh, malware, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, that's not good. That's not good. And so this website was, hmm, I should have never had it up anyways, to be honest with you, because it just, it was one of those things. I'm like, ah, I'm going to go ahead and put this site up here and see what happens of it. Nothing ever happened of it. So I just held on to this specific website and I never checked in on it. Problem is hackers love that. They love to see abandoned websites that are just sitting there so they can go in and hack it and then take it over. So HostGator gets a hold of me. They say, hey, your stuff's been hacked. You're going to probably have to go to each one of your websites in this service and you're going to need to clean them up. They're like, here's some articles that you can look into and do it yourself. Or you can get a hold of us. And I'm like, well, of course I'm going to get a hold of them. Get a hold of them. I'm panicking. I'm freaked out. And they pretty much said, okay, with all these websites, blah, 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 yakety schmackety, it's going to be about, I think it was like a thousand to 1200 bucks for them to go in and fix my stuff. And I'm like, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know you guys are cheap per month, but now this is way above and beyond what I anticipate playing, paying for a website service. So I share this horror story with you in the hopes that you, first of all, will do your due diligence, do your research, and find out more about a company before you invest in them. I'll recommend some companies to you, and I'll recommend my preferred one that I end up moving over to. I'll say this right now, um, used to be an affiliate for HostGator. I'll never push that, that site again, again. If you ever seen the old videos of me saying it, disregard it, disregard it. So what do you look for in a website host? The very first thing is going to be reputation. What type of reputation do they have? It's going to be something as simple as typing in that website host and put in reviews, read articles, get a few of them. 
Watch a few videos. The important thing when it comes to articles and videos, do they have an affiliate relationship or a sponsorship relationship of some sort? Meaning, is there financial compensation? Because there is going to be a certain level of bias in sharing a website host provider and getting benefit from that. So always take it with a grain of salt. That's why I say, look around, see if you can find some good, honest reviews and just figure out what their reputation is. Sometimes even going through and checking the Better Business Bureau might be a smart idea. Who actually owns the company makes a huge difference. So for instance, you can probably look up GoDaddy and GoDaddy's run by GoDaddy. But if you go and you look at something like HostGator, they're owned by EIG, Endurance International Group. And EIG is notorious for going and buying out these little companies and such and claiming it as their own. And then they pretty much water it down however they see fit. I'm not a fan of EIG and there's quite a few people that aren't either. And my eyes are definitely open to something like that. So again, who owns the company? What's their track record? Because if you could just follow the trail, you might find out some telling things. Because at first, HostGator was just fine with me. But then I come to find out they were picked up by EIG, and EIG was notorious for grabbing these sites and essentially watering it down, making it pretty much like a bad product. The next thing is going to be, how's the user interface? The user interface is going to be huge because if you're going to be doing website hosting, you're going to probably need to learn a little bit of nerd stuff, but you shouldn't have to learn everything. And this was one of my biggest gripes when it came to HostGator. Their C panel, also otherwise known as the customer panel, was overwhelming. I had to look up YouTube videos anytime I needed to log in and just figure out where things were at. You know, uh, I just would get confused. So make sure that the user interface is going to be nice. And I'm going to tell you too, by the way, we're going to work our way into like, well, how can you tell the user interface without buying the service? It's a good point. The question you have to ask yourself when it comes to that user interface is, do you have to hire someone to understand it? If so, move on. If not, then put them on your short list. Maybe that should be a company to consider. But I found sometimes, and I ignored my gut instinct on this, for something like HostGator, the C panel was just mind boggling, like too much. Where how am I supposed to find these things? And I'd have to get on support and their support was always just, yeah, bless them. They did the best they could. What additional features will you get as part of that website hosting? So think about things like email hosting. I think it's just mandatory for me to have some type of email hosting with the service provider. It's, it's, it, it's mandatory to me. Because let's say, for instance, I have a site like dalelroberts.com. I would like to have it to where I have dale at dalelroberts.com or, you know, admin at dalelroberts.com that I'm able to do the email hosting through that service. So they hang on to those emails and host that for me. There are some services out there that charge extra for it. So for instance, I think GoDaddy charges extra if you want to have a customized email. Comes free with a lot of other people. Not trying to punch down on GoDaddy, and I've used them before. I won't have as bad remarks on them as I do with HostGator, but nonetheless. The next thing is consider a secure connection. We are right now in the day and age that people are looking for security, and they don't want to just show up to your normal HTTP site. Does this secure connection cost extra? HostGator, guess what? You want a secure connection? Pay more. You got to pay more. What? Why isn't this built in? Because doesn't my security mean your security as a company? Because someone hacks my site. Guess what? They're hacking into your server as well. Why wouldn't you put together something like that for somebody no extra cost or work it into it automatically? By the way, it's also known as SSL, the SSL certificate. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to sit here and tell you exactly what that's about. Essentially, it's site security. The next thing's gonna be a website builder. Now, this is not required, 
but there are a number of sites. For instance, I brought up GoDaddy. GoDaddy's got a great website builder. Wix has got a pretty good website builder of some sort. Um, I personally prefer WordPress. It's 100% free to use and integrates with most website hosting services out there. Um, and by the way, if you are right now on the fence and you don't have the money to spare, start with wordpress.org or .com, either one of those. .org is one I recommend for many reasons. But you would get set up with that free service. That way, when you move over to the web hosting, it's a simple thing of just taking the content you already have on the free site and you just transfer over to your paid site. Website limits. Look at the limits that you're, you're provided with. Uh, for instance, I use a, a service called SiteGround and I have the top tier plan of GoGeek. This means I get unlimited sites. Even their mid-tier plan is called uh, grow, grow Big and that's actually unlimited sites as well. If you go on their more basic plan, you get one site, but that could be plenty for you if you're an author that's just looking for just one website. Um, this is nice for creating micro sites and additional content surrounding your brand. So as a, for instance, a lot of you have heard me talk about DaleLRoberts.com. That's my author webpage. I've talked about self-publishing with Dale.com. That is my self-publishing with Dale landing page and all things pertaining to self-publishing with Dale. I've also got another site called DaleLinks.com. You hear me say that a lot, but believe it or not, it actually is a website with additional information on it. Um, and so... I have all these microsites and I build those things out. Uh, one could even make the argument right now I'm in the midst of a project and I want to speak too soon that I'm able to build out an additional website through my, my site ground hosting. And the beauty of it is it doesn't sl slow down any of the site time on any of the sites that I have. Uh, will I do a ton of them? No, I learned my mistake through HostGator that, you know, having over a half dozen sites on one specific service can really spell disaster, especially if one thing goes bad, it'll knock the rest of those things out. But I feel very safe and confident working with SiteGround. They've been great to me so far. Here's another thing is backups. Look into backups of some sort. Make sure that they back up your website because from time to time you might get a hacker that comes in and breaks into your site or maybe you accidentally load the wrong thing and it screws up your entire website. Maybe you tried to mess with the CSS or the HTML that's on the website and it just made it all goofy. Having those backups makes a huge difference and gets it to where if for some reason something goes south, you always have a backup. So automated is gonna be the best way to go about it because going in and doing backup depends on how much you have on your website. So for instance, I used to have my assistant have to manage my website or websites, and it would take her about an hour to do backup on all the sites. So that starts to add up after a while. If you can find a service that has backup automation, go with them, that's awesome. And the next thing is gonna be money back guarantee. Will they offer your money back if you don't like it after the first 30 days or a couple weeks? Find out if there's a money back guarantee because if you have that, you know that this is the type of company that doesn't just want your money. They want to make sure that you're happy with what they're doing. Reasonable rates. You're going to be looking at anywhere from about $5 to $40 per month. $5 in bargain basement end of things is typically going to be like an entry price. Like they're going to have something on sale and you'll be able to do it that way. Better deals happen when you buy it all in advance. If you ever find something that's month to month, I just recommend stray away from that because what happens if you end up missing a monthly payment? Your website's gone. That sucks. Buy it at least a year in advance and plan on putting that into your calendar as a reminder, okay, it's getting ready to renew because you're gonna wanna make sure that you pay the piper when he comes along to collect his dues. So, buyer beware. Watch out for low deals with eventual high pricing. You'll see a lot of sites that will rope you in with, hey, get us for $5 per month. And then you see in the fine print, oh yeah, we, we cost $16. Yeah, it gets a little bit messy. It gets a little bit messy, especially if you're not planning that ahead. I can't tell you how many times people have bought a website domain from a specific domain service for a dollar. And then the next year, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm spending like $15 for the year. Website hosting gets much worse because again, it can cost anywhere from $5 to $40 up to $60 with some services. So watch out for that. Um, you do not want to keep 
moving your hosting service, folks. If you buy a hosting service, make sure you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is the one I want to go for because trying to move it, it's a lot of heartache. I'll tell you when I moved from HostGator over to SiteGround, it could have been a nightmare. Thank, thankfully, SiteGround really, really helped out. So um, it's best to find somewhere to set up shop and stay. Hey folks, we're going to get towards the end of this podcast here. I want to, of course, give a big shout out to Author Brand Kits. And by the way, Author Brand Kits was largely responsible for cleaning up the mess that HostGator had left. So make sure that you go take a look at them at dalelinks.com slash ABK and find out why I rave about them so much. Final tip here, folks, do your research before settling. I mean, dig deep into it. This is not something you should rush into. My preferred website hosting, I think you've already heard, is SiteGround. You can go over to dalelinks.com slash SiteGround, that's S-I-T-E, ground. And uh, they're actually running a 68% off web hosting limited time deal for the summer. Uh, You could start at $4.99 per month, and it does go up after the first year to $14.99, which is still pretty reasonable. They do have a 30-day money-back guarantee. There's a good reason why I stick with them, and I just endorse them wholeheartedly. Uh, Hey, folks, we're getting towards the end here. Subscribe or follow me on your preferred podcasting platform and do me a favor, leave a review. In the meantime, we're going to be talking a little bit more about websites in the coming weeks here on the podcast. So make sure that you stay tuned. Till later, it's been Self-Publishing with Dale and I'll chat with you then.